Hello there, and this week uh, we're going to tackle the vexing question of relevance. So this is that time of the year when uh, we ask students if what they learned was relevant uh, to their lives, and they say no. And so this week we're making an argument for the relevance of what we've been studying. We'll try this again next week too. How is uh, the study of the evolution of human behavior relevant? Well, we're going to start with the big picture, and it's relevant to understanding what we call the Anthropocene. So welcome uh, to the Anthropocene. And this is a time when global cooperation is required, uh, but it's certainly not guaranteed. And one way to define the Anthropocene is to look at the human impact on the biomes of the world and how much this has changed in just the last few centuries. So this is a map of the biomes of the world in 1700, including areas uh, like we can see in Western Europe and in India and China and in West Africa, uh, where human activities have had a significant impact. So that's 1700. Now let's roll forward to the anthromes of the world in the year 2000. And there we go. And now as you can see, uh, human impacted environments, anthromes, cover most of the surface of the earth. There's only a few areas like up on the Tamir Peninsula in northern Siberia where human impacts are limited. And over much of the earth, and not just West Africa now, but all but uh, some of Central Africa, humans have modified the earth. And look at the massive changes in India. So if we back up and let you see this again, this is 1700. And this is the year 2000. So what were what are called human dominated ecosystems uh, are most of the ecosystems on the planet and that's what an anthrome is. And biologists estimate that 60% of the Earth's biotic potential is now directed to human uses. And this has entailed a drastic simplification of ecosystems and in a long-term evolutionary perspective, the sixth uh, mass extinction. So in the history of life over the last billion years, paleontologists have identified five major extinctions. And what's occurring today appears to be a sixth one, largely due to human activities. So we live in an unanticipated world and this was so even in the early 20th century, as Jerome Barkow, an evolutionary biologist, notes, modern industrial societies are utterly exotic from a Pleistocene perspective. Actually, modern industrial societies are utterly exotic from a Neolithic perspective. If we look at traditional agrarian societies, and many anthropologists don't seem to realize just how much uh, things have changed uh, very recently. The distribution of these changes has been highly unequal. And one way that we can view this is in terms of ecological footprints. So the wealthiest areas of the world have the heaviest ecological footprint. And we have linked our well-being in the world to a material infrastructure that arguably cannot be globalized but as we'll see, there's massive social inequalities associated with the differences in material infrastructure and especially energy consumption. And the shape of the future of our world depends on our capacity for altruistic acts and our willingness to cooperate. We arguably don't have much of, much of a future if we choose to behave selfishly or spitefully. And is that possible? So we're going to explore uh, multiple dimensions of the Anthropocene. I hope you enjoy it.